Hello and welcome to the Hibber Vault Show. I'm thrilled to have with us today Serena Mastin, an extraordinary entrepreneur, author, and speaker. Serena's life journey has been marked by incredible resilience and determination as she has overcome numerous obstacles to achieve success both personally and professionally. From a very difficult upbringing to experiencing homelessness and the devastating loss of her husband, Serena's story is one of triumph over adversity. And today we're going to delve into Serena's experiences, the valuable lessons she's learned along the way, and how she's been able to use her experiences to empower others. We hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Hip Fall Podcast. Thank you all listening and watching for joining us and welcome Serena Mastin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored and humbled, so thank you. Yeah, it's it, it's great to have you. When we were doing a little bit of upfront research on um, on the uh, on yourself and, and Pulse Marketing, uh, the first question I I asked was, would our would our listeners uh, have something to benefit from from having you on the show? And my my initial reaction was like, here on the podcast, we typically focus on hip hop. Uh, healthcare technology, and we often spend a lot of time on informing our listeners about, uh, you know, the, the latest trends in security, healthcare, and stuff. But I also really want our listeners to get some inspiration from time to time, right? And I think I think our our, our discussion today hopefully will provide uh, a little bit of that. So just diving right into it. Um, Starting out a little bit with your background and journey. So your life has been filled with tremendous challenges um, from child abuse uh, to addiction and homelessness. Um, could you maybe touch a little bit on, on that and tell us a little bit about how you found the uh, strength uh, to overcome all these obstacles that you faced in your earlier life and create a successful career for yourself? Well, the... Um... The interesting thing about pain is that a lot of people try to, um, you know, kind of run the other direction and life is filled with it. There's always challenges. There's always pain. It's always in front of us in some way. Um, and what I learned at a very young age from some of the um, pretty explicit, um, you know, traumatic events that I experienced is that the only way to push past it is to push through it. And so, um, and, and sometimes, sometimes to my demise, right, I, <laughs> I pushed through the pain and, um, you know, at times I felt like, you know, I just wanted to get to the top of the mountain and be at the top and just be cheering, like, look at me, I did it, you know? And what I recognized is that the truth in your journey and the truth in your experience and your, your wisdom is, is gained in every step when you climb the mountain. And so whether your journey has been, you know, like just filled with tumultuous, you know, situations or rocks falling down at you or you're sweating and bleeding on the way up, um, a lot of us try to just get past it. And instead embracing some of those challenges and moments and understanding um, how they impact our behavior, how they impact our lives and our choices and our decisions, will um, give you a sense of self-awareness to continue forward. So I like to call, um, I, li I like to call it uh, post-traumatic wisdom. Hmm. So through like all that. of my challenges, I had this underlying determination to keep going. So yes, I've uh, faced homelessness when I was 16. Um, sexual abuse as a child, as well as um, many types of abuse. And then um, most recently, after starting the agency in 2013, I was um, building the agency and my husband um, was overseeing sales and I was kind of doing everything else and we were growing. We had um, been pretty successful. 
but he struggled with mental health issues, suicidal tendencies, and um, multiple infidelities. And when you're trying to manage a business and you're trying to grow a family, it's like every aspect of your life is impacted by some of those things. And so um, when I finally found the courage to take care of myself, my health, my well-being, um, in October of 2019, by March of 2020, um, he committed suicide. So not only did it impact me individually, not only as a person, an entrepreneur, it impacted my family, our children, and our staff. So, you know, I, we were together for 10 years. By this point, the agency had been in business for, you know, about seven or eight years. And um, one of the things I learned from that experience is that creating a culture in which your staff are, are growing, thriving, and love what they do. When I was at my lowest, when I just could not see past my tears, they were the ones that rose up and carried the agency forward. And that's why we are still standing today. So it's all about culture and investing in people and understanding that your mental health and your well-being are a huge part of every single thing that you do, whether it's personal or professional. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it's, uh, it's really, really inspiring to uh, hear about what you've been through. And then, as you said, um, you know, the rocks that have been flying your way and the boulders that have been flying your way and the boulders yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah no thanks thanks for sharing that um and you mentioned that you founded um pulse marketing and it was in 2013 i believe right yes yeah and it, it, it's it's been it's been going from strength to strength um it's become a, an award-winning agency um could you tell us a little bit about so you mentioned seven eight years ago um, what inspired you to start your own business and uh, what have been some of the factors leading to the success of the agency? You know, I've um, I was in corporate in large, you know, Fortune 500 companies and running, um, you know, 20 different, you know, marketing community. I mean, marketing departments and divisions and doing all those things. And one thing I recognized and was really frustrating for me in uh, the corporate world is that you serve one master, right? And you you don't have the ability to keep everything in one place. We had to hire multiple different types of agencies, whether they're digital, SEO, web, creative, and everything was losing the consistency and it wasn't cohesive. And so I wanted to create an, you know, an experience for, you know, different companies that could actually have everything in one place and so that's when we we created this fractional marketing department approach so we can do the brand we can create the messaging which is the foundation of of who you are as a company we can build the website with the same tone make sure that any type of advertising or social media etc all has a cohesive feel and serving mid to, to you know small to mid-sized companies has been so much more rewarding because we get to be part of their growth like their growth and you know watching them you know rise up and hire new employees like we're making an impact on the community and that's what you know makes us so passionate about what we do that's fantastic and um you all, you're also an author uh, you're a speaker as well as being an entrepreneur. On the speaker front, you touch upon a lot of subjects like business growth, uh, leadership, cultivating healthy business culture. Can you share some insights as to um, how your core values uh, impact that and um, impact the success and failures of businesses in general? So I, you know, I've learned um, that your core values are not something that you just put on the wall. They're not something that you just say, um, you know, in a meeting. This is something you live and you breathe every day. So one of our core values is uh, we serve others before ourselves. And we don't just 
deliver that type of um, experience for our customers and our clients, we actually deliver that same experience to our partners and our employees <laughs> and in serving nonprofits. Like we know that when you serve others, like that's how you develop strong, lasting relationships. So that would be one of them. Another one is um, because we're Pulse Marketing, we um, we kind of found a fun way to tie in, you know, our hearts. So mm -hmm. we pour our hearts into everything we do. Um, that's another one. And then we also have one that is we embrace feedback and we communicate with love. And love is an acronym. It's L-U-V for listen, understand, and validate. Now, the cool thing about all of these cultural beliefs is um, we have something called uh, a crush of the month. <laughs> you know, so um, in our Monday meetings, you know, each of our team members will recognize someone and tie it into the cultural belief. Okay. And um, and then the person who has the most at the end of the month becomes our crush of the month. Oh, so awesome. and they're crushing it. Right. Yeah. And then even bigger, what we do is at the end of the um, week, each of my employees, none of the managers, but each of my employees receive an anonymous survey and they're asked not to vote for themselves, but to vote for somebody else in the organization that has demonstrated one of our core values. No one sees those results except for me. At the end of the year, the person who received the most recognition will receive a trip anywhere around the world. Wow. Yeah. So we do that because it really encourages peer to peer recognition, not upper management recognition. Right. So it allows them to start to not have to feel like they're climbing the, you know, the ladder to get above someone else, but they're actually climbing it together. That's, that, that's awesome. I really like that. Um, and a little bit on the, to, to pivot a little bit towards, you know, our listeners being with, mainly within the, the healthcare industry, um, and you touched uh, a little bit on fractional marketing uh, earlier. Um, could you maybe give an example of, uh, well, first of all, a, a bit more about fractional marketing, as to, you know, what's, what's the approach there, um, and then how healthcare companies can, can use it specifically because i know that you've worked with um like i think some med spa uh, clients in the past and you do have a footprint within the healthcare or, or yeah we've done uh, medical billing cardiology hmm. um you know wellness all of those things um yeah, so how can how can those types of um startups or businesses uh, specifically benefit from uh, the fractional marketing approach well, it's tough to be in, in some of those businesses because the competition is so vast. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're, you know, starting up even a smaller midsize, um, you know, office and you're trying to gain new patients and go through that process, um, you can't really afford to bring in, you know, a graphic designer, you know, a marketing manager, right, to someone to actually nurture your existing patients and then create new um, campaigns to get, you know, potentially new leads. Mm -hmm. So the reason we've done it as a fractional marketing agency is so that if you can't afford to have, you know, have an annual salary for a marketing manager and, mm -hmm. you know, outsource to all these different designers and web people, we've created this fractional service where they can uh, purchase a, a certain number of hours per month and then our entire team uh, basically, they have access to our content designers, our graphic designers, um, our writers. They have the access to our intelligence team, which oversees your web, email, social media, and digital campaigns. And then they have um, a personal director of projects that oversees everything. And so the beautiful thing is you have access to all of this for less than a fraction of the cost of hiring a marketing manager. And you don't have to worry about the training. You already have experts in each of those areas. And then we serve and support you as if we're an extension of your team. Yeah, and, and for our listeners and viewers, uh, for more information on uh, that type of service that um, Serena and Pulse Marketing offer, uh, you can visit pulsemarketingteam.com. Did I get that right? You did. Okay, awesome, yeah. Um, and then 
just a, a, a little bit more on that. And I know for, for healthcare specifically, uh, fractional marketing seems to uh, play in here specifically because I know that uh, in the areas when it comes to case studying, uh, case yeah. studies and content writing, it, there's a lot of nuance and subtlety that goes into that because you do have, uh, you, you can't mention specific patients or without obviously permission. And so a lot goes into that. So it sounds yes. like fractional marketing would be, would be ideal there because you get a specialist for that. Yes. So the, the challenge with a lot of, whether you're, you know, um, launching new medical devices, right. Or you're starting a new medical office, whatever it may be, there are so there's so many obstacles and red tape that a lot of younger individuals just coming into the industry wouldn't know. So having an entire team of, of experts in a lot of these different areas allows us to collaborate and provide recommendations, insight, and making sure that we're following these guidelines instead of finding out the hard way when you're bringing in someone that may know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, yeah. So um, be sure to check out uh, Serena and Pulse Marketing Team at that website. Um, moving on a little bit to your recently published memoir. Um, exciting Watch times it. for you. Uh, exposed, you can't heal when you hide. Uh, it delves into your personal journey and the healing process. Can you tell us a bit more about the book? Okay, well, I hope that anyone listening is sitting down. <laughs> so um you know as a child um my biological father was a leader of a satanic cult and he um you know brainwashed my mother he sexually abused uh, my sister and i and we were um when we did finally get out of that scenario we were put into witness protection um so, you know, even starting your life in, in some of those scenarios is, is hard enough. And then I made it harder later on in life because of all the trauma, the mental health issues, uh, dissociation, um, all of that then led to a rebellious behavior as a teenager, which is why I was living on the streets at 16. And of course that led to even more, you know, tumultuous situations. And so after my, um, after I climbed the corporate ladder and felt like I was on top of the mountain, started the agency, and then I saw my world crumbling again, um, I recognized that there's patterns. There's these, these integral patterns that we are shaped by from when we're children. And I started writing the book really just to heal. I wasn't intending to share it with the world. And by the way, it's explicit, it's raw, it's transparent. It brings you into every experience that I've, I've faced. And so in writing it, I wrote it in that way. And what I recognized as I was writing it is that my pattern is I have a tendency to hide. I either am hiding behind the scenes, I'm hiding literally as a child in the closet, <laughs> or I'm hiding behind being strong and being strong all the time and trying to carry the world on my shoulders and trying to protect everyone and sacrificing myself for others. And I recognize all these patterns uh, evolved around hiding. And so I needed to find the courage to, to actually face my fear and, and to stop hiding. And by doing that, I published the book just a few um, like months ago. So it's brand new and it's scary that all of my deep dark secrets are now in front of the world <laughs> how does it feel is it is it relief or you know there's a part of me that has relief that it's done because it, it was a two-year process writing and i'm not a writer i had to learn i had to you know hire a book coach to kind of like understand the process yeah. so it feels good that it's done and behind me but i also feel like i i found a deeper sense of purpose through this process and it's really focusing on you know mental health and how i can support that more with my story it's identifying you know what other ways can i give to those who feel like they have to hide behind you know being strong or being you know whatever it is all the time and so that deeper sense of purpose is also 
helped me heal and led me, you know, down a path. And my staff has been so supportive through this whole process that they've really allowed me to go through the grieving process while they rose up and, you know, really ran the company. Mm -hmm. So it's been a huge blessing through this whole process. That's fantastic. And congratulations on, uh, on, on releasing the book. Uh, is it, is it on your personal website where uh, our viewers and listeners can go and stop? Yeah, their, uh, and they could even go on Amazon and just type in Serena Mastin, and it'll be the only one that pops up. Okay, so Amazon, it'll be easier Serena that way. <laughs> okay, cool. And then you also so have my a website is SerenaMastin.com. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we included that. And I think, I think one uh, very important point here is that. You know, you you have climbed the corporate ladder. You you're an entrepreneur, uh, but you've also had these experiences, which you know, no one would wish on anyone. Uh, but they are experiences, and they're unique, and so they've led to you having a different outlook and coming to different conclusions on on certain topics. So there's definitely a lot of value there for any potential readers. I think of the book. Uh, because they'll be able to get those insights without necessarily having to go through the yeah. experience directly. They can, they can experience it through you. I don't, I don't wish yeah. it on anyone. Yeah. It's, um, you know, the, the interesting thing about post-traumatic wisdom is understanding that wisdom never stops. You're always gaining it, whether you're facing an obstacle or whether you're learning something new. And, um, People can use the experiences as an excuse to stay in, in where they are, or they can use it as fuel to push them forward. And I really wanted to make a difference and an impact in not only through the agency for, you know, small and mid-sized companies and, you know, medical offices and wellness and all these different things that I'm passionate about, but I also wanted to make an impact on the, the individual that could potentially read this and it could change their mindset and moving forward. Hmm. And uh, just as a, a little teaser, uh, any lessons, advice, like if you could give uh, one lesson in terms of what you've learned uh, through your life um, and maybe gained through your marketing career, um, like, and how that's shaped your approach to uh, strategies and tactics in general. I think the, the biggest thing is that when you um, face a lot of these challenges, you get defeated, you get depressed, you um, you feel like you're shutting down, whether you're an entrepreneur, business owner, working in you know specific industries. And I would say um, more powerful than the, the will to win is the courage to begin and get up again and get up again. And so... It takes a lot of strength to do that when you're in a place where you just can't see past some of the challenges in front of you. But I would just encourage people to keep getting up and keep moving forward because it's those little steps that eventually they'll look back and see how much progress they've made. Fantastic. I love it. Um, well, Serena, uh, thank you very much for uh, being on our podcast and thank you for uh, sharing uh, with us and thank you for having me i'm honored thank you so much yeah it's my pleasure so uh to learn more about uh, serena and her work be sure to visit her at serenamaston.com you can also check out pulsemarketingteam.com and buy her book on amazon exposed you can't heal when you hide